Hi, everyone. This is Caitlin Saposi Belknap. I'm Move to Amends National Director, and I'll be uh, leading this webinar today. Thanks so much for joining us. This uh, whole presentation will be recorded and available on our website tomorrow. We'll also send a link to those of you who registered, and the slides will be made available as well. So you should have everything you need, um, even if you come in a little bit late or if you want to use this again later. So um, I'm sorry that I forgot to check whether this phone number and uh, attendee access code is correct that's on your screen right now. So if you've already used the telephone and dialed in with something else, uh, then just ignore this. And um, when you first come in, it should give you the details about how to call in. I, they've changed the system, and I forgot to check and make sure they didn't change these numbers. Uh, if you have questions, you can use the chat bar at the bottom. And um, I'll probably hold most of them until the end, but feel free to ask them at any point. And uh, I am running this by myself here, so um, if I miss something, I'll definitely cover it at the end, um, but I'll also try, if it's relevant along the way, to pause if you've got questions. And definitely you should just feel free to type them in any time. If you're having trouble getting in um, or if it's not working right for you, uh, there's not a lot of technical support that I can do while we're going, so um, you can try contacting any meeting, but also know, again, that this will be recorded or is being recorded. Um, so you can always go off of the recording later if you're having technical difficulties right now. So um, we're going to talk about Move to Amend and um, how to get involved, some of the stuff that we have going on right now. The assumption for this presentation is that you're relatively new to Move to Amend. Um, but let's just get a quick uh, pulse and see there's a poll that's going to pop up on your screen. And if you could enter the answer to the question, what is your involvement with Move to Amend? If you're an affiliate coordinator, an affiliate member, meaning that you're not maybe the leader of your group, but you're active with an affiliate. Um, if you're a volunteer, but not through an affiliate. And then if you're brand new and have never been involved before. And I think you all can Oops, let me see. There, I think you all can see on your screen the answer. So yes, it looks like most everyone here is new. And if you are a volunteer, you're not yet involved with a local group. So perfect. Um, thanks for giving us that feedback. So um, we're going to do a quick overview of Move to Amend, and I'm going to talk about some of the projects that we have going on in 2015 and let you know about ongoing volunteer opportunities and ways to plug in, and then answer any questions. It should take about an hour. It depends how many questions you have. I can stay on in for 90 minutes, um, but normally it doesn't take that long. So Move to Amend, um, presumably you all are plugged in in some way or another. Most of you came off of our, our list. You've signed our petition. Um, so you probably already know a bit about us. We're a coalition of hundreds of organizations and hundreds of thousands of individuals. Our commitment is to social and economic justice, ending corporate rule, and building a vibrant democracy that's genuinely accountable to the people, not corporate interests. And obviously our initial and most important overriding goal is to pass the We the People Amendment. Um, which has been introduced in Congress as House Joint Resolution 48 with this Congress. Um, and that amendment makes clear that artificial entities do not have constitutional rights and that money is not speech and therefore campaign spending can be regulated by Congress or the states. We also, um, our, another goal that we have is to provoke discussion and organizing about how to make real the promise of American democracy through constitutional renewal. So we see the We the People Amendment as first and foremost, most, but in building this movement for passing this amendment, we certainly want to uh, be provoking questions about how we could make our country and our, our, founding, do our founding law and then the whole legal system more democratic 
and um, better serving people's needs and rights and those of our planet. So the principles that we operate from um, are important for kind of getting a sense of the tone of our organization. We have a commitment to anti-oppression and solidarity organizing. Um, and I'm going to talk about some of these things in a little bit, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about them. But in general, um, we believe that uh, oppressions are layered on top of each other. It's not an accident that we're in the situation that we're in now. That um, One way to think of it is that basically at this point in the United States, property has more rights than human beings or other sentient beings. And that uh, ideology is actually now going global with um, trade agreements and um, international organizations like the WTO that were basically founded out of U.S. Uh, theory around property having kind of the utmost um, need for in terms of setting law and culture. And so being that this country was founded on uh, genocide and also uh, stealing human beings from other continents and bringing them here and um, treating them as property. It's not really an accident that we've gotten into the situation that we're in, and these things are compounded on top of each other. And so it's important when we're unpacking um, how far from being a democratic country we are in the United States that these other layers be incorporated into our analysis and understanding so we know how we got here and what all is required to really um, peel back and move towards a democratic system. And democratic, when I use that word, you know, it certainly has, it's not about a political party. I'm using small d democracy and kind of the root of the word, which is that the people have power. And so that, that the people have power over the decisions that affect our lives. So some people call that a democratic republic. Some people just say democracy. Um, for the purposes of, of this, we're, I'm using those interchangeably. And also that because corporate personhood and, and corporate power is connected to so many of the issues that affect people, and increasingly the fact that we have just a small elite um, making governance decisions both through dictating who gets to be in office, but also setting actual policy, um, it's important that we are able to connect these issues that folks are working on that are basically the impacts of that reality to our um, systemic solution of the We the People Amendment and ending corporate personhood. So that's kind of what we mean by solidarity organizing. We believe in coalition building and movement building. The only way that we're going to be able to uh, pass this amendment is through building a movement. It is the only way that uh, human rights, um, social change measures, as significant as amending the Constitution, have been successful before. And so it's not going to be about getting the ear of, you know, a particular set of folks in Congress or a political party or another, it's going to be about building a people's movement. And we need to do that through building coalitions with organizations that already exist and understanding that it is going to require this mass movement. We strongly believe in grassroots organizing, and that's why Move to Amend is structured the way that it is around local, uh, what we call affiliate groups, um, folks who are doing the organizing and education in their local communities that can adapt to the particulars of where they live, and that is rooted in um, local power. We have a dedication to political education, and that kind of goes back to some of what I said on the first point, that in order to really unpack where we are now, we have to fully understand what's got us here. And it's not about the Citizens United decision in and of itself. It's not about you know a, a, a recent it's not about this current Supreme Court. It's not about, um, you know, a particular president and agenda. Um, it actually goes pretty deep. And so understanding all of those layers um, and complexities is important for making sure that we end up with a solution that, that is actually going to be lasting and not just words on paper. And, of course, we need political and economic independence. So that's both in terms of, you know, political parties, um, but also in terms of um, the, you know, funding base of Move to Amend is 
almost exclusively individuals. Um, our average donation is, is $40, and um, we intend to keep it that way in terms of our, you know, not being beholden to the foundation world or um, wealthy donors, but rather being uh, grassroots funded, and that allows us to maintain our economic independence. And also, of course, not being tied to any political party or um, or kind of other force within the political world right now, but maintaining our independence so that we are not um, encouraged to go for lesser solutions than what's really needed. So just a quick reminder that to amend the Constitution, um, there is a bit of direction in the Constitution for how that can be done. It's not as um, detailed as, as might be helpful. Um, there are basically two paths. One is for two-thirds of both houses of Congress, both the House and the Senate, to pass an amendment resolution, and then for three-quarters of the states to ratify uh, the, the amendment. That is the path that most amendments have taken. And of course, we've had 27, and the first 10 were done all at once as the Bill of Rights, so we haven't had too terribly many examples of amendments to the Constitution. There is another path laid out in Article 5 of the Constitution, which is where the part about Congress is laid out as well. And that allows for the states to initiate um, a, call, a call for a constitutional convention or an amendment convention. Um, so again, two-thirds of state legislators have to call for a convention to propose amendments. And then, again, three-quarters of the states have to ratify any amendment or amendments that would come out of a convention like that. So there have been threats of a constitutional convention, and that's actually been a tactic that has been used to uh, light a fire for Congress to actually respond, um, because there have been many times where there has been the political will on the part of the public for the Constitution to be changed in one form or another and Congress not moving. And so um, the states moving forward and threatening a convention has, to date, uh, made Congress act. Or if that energy isn't able to be built, then you know the amendment proposals have, have died. Um, we haven't had a constitutional convention so far in our history. And, and uh, while we're on that slide, I'll just mention, because it probably many of you are thinking, well, what's move to amend strategy? So our perspective is that, again, we're going to need a uh, people's movement in order to be successful with either of these options. And really, that fork in the road of the path for um, Congress or a convention, we're not at that point yet. We're not powerful enough, we and the broader call for uh, this amendment haven't reached the point where we're powerful enough to be successful on either front, and the work that we need to do to get there is the same in either case, to make a successful convention or to force Congress to act. And so our focus is on building that movement at this point, and we haven't ruled out either option. We certainly need to have a plan B if Congress refuses to act. As I mentioned, our amendment has been introduced in Congress, but uh, currently, our main focus is not really on, on moving that forward in Congress, but rather building the capacity and um, the call for it uh, with, the, with the more general public. I see that there are a couple questions. I think some of them are going to be covered as we go, and if they're not, then I will certainly circle back to them. Um, so our strategy, as I said, is, the, is, the Ameri is to focus on the American people at this time, not Congress. We, our amendment has been introduced, and we're proud of our co-sponsors, and we actually have nine now. Um, recently, we just got picked up a few more. And certainly, um, one of the things I'll talk about later is our pledge to amend to uh, get elected officials and candidates to pledge to support the amendment. So it's not like we're ignoring Congress entirely, but... Uh, we don't see a lot of potential to build um, momentum in Congress without building this movement. And so we're focusing on education and capacity building, because that's really the phase of the movement that we're in right now. 
We also engage in coalition building, reaching out to other organizations that are working on issues affected by corporate power. So that's not necessarily directly money in politics, although it might be, but that also includes um, groups that are working against private prisons, folks that are working on food sovereignty issues, folks that are working on uh, factory farming. I mean, there's there's so many issues. Almost every single thing is touched by corporations having more power than communities and then people to, to make law and or to overturn laws that 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 we try to pass to protect workers or the environment or just the general wel public welfare. And so it's important that we can connect all of those issues because that's going to be the fabric of this movement, um, helping folks see that, yes, there's the, the short-term struggles that we're engaged in to try and protect our communities or our families or our worker or you know our coworkers but then there's also longer term solution that would make it so that we don't have to continuously fight these struggles and that's the passing of this amendment so you know there are thousands of groups that have endorsed move to amend and that's one of the ways um that our local affiliates get involved um by bringing in more local folks uh, building a broad and diverse, multiracial, and intergenerational movement. Um, we we need to prioritize reaching out to those who are most affected by corporate rule. Um, generally, that tends to be low-income people. That tends to be people of color, um, folks who are economically marginalized. Because, one, we need to ensure that their needs are met by our solution, because that will make... Um, guarantee that the solution will also work for everyone else, but also because the folks who are kind of the most likely to resonate with a message that it's not like we need a Band-Aid, we need a systemic solution, which is what Move to Amend's um, message is, the folks who are most likely to resonate with that are folks who have been living the reality of uh, a, bro a, a broken system um, and some of the other ways that our system is broken, whether we're talking about the realities of institutionalized racism or classism um, or patriarchy. And so... Uh, we need to prioritize those groups, and that's part of Move to Amend strategy. And of course, we need to be intergenerational because this is a long-term movement. And so, um, one, every successful social movement has been intergenerational and has figured that out. But if we're going to survive for the long haul, we need to keep in mind that it isn't people who are in their 50s and 60s who are going to be in Congress or in state legislatures, um, you know, in 10 years. Uh, they're increasingly going to be younger people who are in those positions and who have um, power, and we need to make sure that we're um, including them, not to mention that, you know, student debt and some of the issues that are facing younger people have a direct nexus with corporate power as well. We put an emphasis on community organizing, not just activism. And um, what I mean by that is that organizing is about power. Organizing is about relationships, especially in this day and age of Facebook and um, and Twitter and every organization having a petition that doesn't necessarily even go anywhere, but it's about collecting names. There's a lot of clicktivism that happens. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, not not really building relationships, not really building any kind of power or capacity when we're taking action. And that's not to say that Move to Amend doesn't use some of those tactics. One of our primary recruiting mechanisms is our motion to, our, to amend, our petition. But um, one of the things that sets Move to Amend apart from a lot of other national organizations is you're not going to find us just say, you know, click here and now donate, and that's all we want to do with you. We, um, you know, have our local affiliates, and that's the main way that people plug in is by actually getting involved and taking ownership over this organization and this movement. And that is what builds pl power and capacity and moves us into um, the kind of momentum that's necessary for building a movement. And our focus is on grassroots organizing for that very reason, because the best way to build relationships is with people face-to-face. -face. And so one of the main tactics that we use is passing local and state resolutions, calling for an amendment to build momentum, um, publicity, public exposure, 
I mean, so much of why Move to Amend and this amendment and this call is out there in the greater public is because of these local and state resolutions that we've passed where we're basically putting communities on record to say we want an amendment. Over 600 communities have passed um, these uh, resolutions calling for an amendment, and many of them have happened through ballot initiatives where the public votes directly calling for an amendment. And that also then feeds into building pressure for our elected officials to either move them to our side or make the opportunity to show that they're not on our side and make space for new people to step forward into leadership. So some of the projects that we're working on, um, and I was just talking about this one, the resolutions um, campaign that has been ongoing from when we very first launched Move to Amend in 2010. So the emphasis is on public education, not just getting it passed. Yes, it's, it's powerful to say that we have you know, X number of local resolutions, especially as that number grows and grows, but it's more about we have 600 communities where they have engaged in the conversation around what is corporate personhood and why we need this amendment and why it's the solution to the issues around um, big money in elections and also so many of the other things that are affecting communities' ability to take care of themselves. So that's why we use the citizens initiative process, which doesn't always exist in every state, unfortunately, but whenever that is uh, a tactic that we can use, we focus on that um, and putting it directly in front of voters, not just the elected officials. And as we build more and more local resolutions, that prepares our local volunteer organizers for the capacity to um, to to move these to statewide ballot initiatives. So our best example right now, and a shout out to anybody who's in Washington State, is that our folks and a broader coalition are collecting signatures to put a resolution on the ballot um, for next year and are currently in the process of collecting those signatures. So that's the kind of thing that we want our local work to build up to. And if you'd like more information about the resolutions, you can see um, those that website link. There's a lot of information on our website. We also have kind of a burgeoning project that hasn't, we haven't quite figured out where to take it, but we've had a lot of interest, so we're definitely committed to figuring out how to use um, the civil disobedience or direct action tactic. So right now what we have is a pledge that um, folks are, will, feel as though this issue is important enough that they're willing to, that you're, you or anybody you know is willing to pledge um, that at the time when there is enough of a critical mass to make it an effective tactic to be willing to engage in acts of dignified civil, peaceful civil disobedience that could potentially result in arrest. And this is a tactic that has been used by um, almost every single social movement. Um, it's not the one to start with first, but I think that we're actually well beyond the point where, um, where it feels as though we're in a crisis. So whether we're talking about lunch counter sit-ins or uh, women who went into the polls and voted despite the fact that they were barred from doing so or the women who stood in front of the White House for um, months and months and months on end in order to um, create pressure and exposure for uh, the right to vote. Those are the kinds of things that we're talking about. And we have already done, you know, some rallies and marches and things like that, but we need to be prepared to, to escalate, and that's a lot of what helps get attention and also helps channel um, people's outrage and despair into feeling as though they're, they're you know, st standing up in front of um, – what's going on and, and, and trying to make it stop. And so right now we're just collecting the pledge and, um, and, and currently engaged in discussions around civil disobedience as an organization. Another pledge is the Pledge to Amend, which focuses on elected officials but also candidates for office. So as we all know, we're beginning to um, get into the campaign season around the presidential election. And of course, you know, that's not the only one that will be coming up next year, but we're already seeing campaigning beginning to happen in swing states and in the national media. 
And so Pledge to Amend is both a lobbying effort, but also a what's called bird dogging effort. Bird dogging is when you are in front of uh, folks who are running for office and bring in an issue forward. So an example that probably everybody knows about at this point would be um, at the Iowa State Fair, the last presidential election, when Mitt Romney um, was uh, pushed to state his position on whether corporations are people, and he put it out there, corporations are people, my friend. And that was um, a group of folks who were involved with Move to Amend who who pushed that, and from there, you know, a, another component of it is you don't just want to get them to say it in this day and age. You want to get it on video, and then you want to push it out there. Um, so it's both focusing on candidates and forcing them to take a position also potentially creating an embarrassing situation if they don't know what they think yet or um, as a way to to drive the issue into the political uh, discourse. But also for media, um, if you do it right and well, then it also becomes something that gets picked up by uh, media, whether nationally at the state level or locally, and becomes a, a campaign issue that they have to take a position on and uh, justify their position. And we're already seeing some of that with the presidential candidates, but it's important that we make um, we focus in on the discussion and we don't not allow it to just be broad and say, oh, m there's too much money in politics or we need to do something about Citizens United, but particularly what is your position on the We the People Amendment and um, corporations having constitutional rights. And this certainly doesn't need to be something that is only happening for federal candidates. Uh, office holders at local, state, and federal level should all be engaging in this conversation. So as we're gearing up for 2016 and the next general election, and then in the meantime, uh, folks who are in office uh, right now, again, at the local, state, or federal level, <coughs> excuse me, can take our pledge and be listed as both a supporter of our amendment and also willing to use their office to help move it forward. And so there's details on the Pledge to Amend page, and right now we're in August where uh, it's a good opportunity to set up meetings with your congressperson while they're in their districts and uh, get them to take a position. And if they're in the House, then they can even become a co-sponsor of our amendment. And if they're in the Senate, then they can introduce our amendment. An easy way to plug, so, so that's kind of a higher level. Works better if you have a group of folks. That's a little bit harder to do all by yourself setting up meetings with your congressperson. It's certainly not impossible, but in terms of being most effective and most likely that they will listen, it's more effective if you've actually done some work to you know, build a group and also um, identified who some of their uh, you know, who some of the folks that they listen to are, other organizations who have supported them or whose opinion they respect, um, and that you have the endorsement from those, things like that. But something that you can do all by yourself and as a way to help grow into a new group is to hold a house party for democracy. And you can either do that with an education um, focus or a fundraising focus, or you can combine the two. We have a 30-minute uh, DVD that you can show that's available for free on YouTube, but you can also order the DVD to put in your, um, you know, the hard disk that you can put into your DVD player or computer at home and um, show it and have a conversation. If you would like to have one of us from the national team also join in via Skype, that's something that we've done before too, if you want to have like a Q&A. And then from there, uh, you get to have a good conversation with friends and um, you know colleagues. So you can invite whoever you want. We can also help you by inviting other Move to Amend petition signers in your area if you'd like to bring in, meet some new folks who are interested in Move to Amend too. And you can collect donations for the, for the national campaign, collect petitions, but also it's a great way to start a new group. So um, you can find all the details at movetoamend.org slash house party. This is another, Stampede to Amend is another thing that you can do by yourself and also bring in uh, new folks. So in partnership with Ben Cohen of Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream, Move to Amend uh, launched 
at this point now several years ago, um, a campaign, uh, a project that we call Stampede to Amend, and now he's doing it on his own as Stamp Stampede with a number of other organizations too. Um, and the project is to stamp your money, but you can also stamp, we stamp all of our outgoing mail. We have stamps that say corporations are not people, money is not speech. And then our website, we also have stamps that say not to be used for bribing politicians that you can use to stamp your money. So you can do this by yourself and actually um, just help spread the message that way. In fact, one of our interns, not from this cycle, but last cycle, found us because her husband brought home a $20 bill with one of our stamps on it. So, And we we hear anecdotally frequently that folks find us because of these um, bills that are stamped. So it's a low-level way to easily reach uh, potentially thousands of people. But you can also um, hold a stamp in. Uh, so you can um, invite folks to your house and um, get the stamps from us and then have people bring cash and stamp all their money. And you could show the film if you wanted to or just have a discussion. Um, you could also publicly table and have folks stamp. So whenever we table, we have our stamps with us and encourage folks to stamp their money. So that's, that's kind of fun way. Um, and it is a little bit... Um, you know, a little bit more risque than petitioning, but um, Ben Cohen has been on national media many times, you might have all seen it, talking about this project, and um, it's illegal to deface currency for the purpose of removing it from circulation, but that's obviously not our point. So uh, nobody has gotten in trouble for stamping, and it is extremely unlikely that anybody would, and, and you would find out first because he would be the first one. Um, and then, of course, there's collecting signatures. Our current goal is to get to 500,000, and um, once we do that, then our goal will be to get to a million. But the petition um, to amend, or motion to amend, as we initially called it when we first launched, so we still call it that, is the very best way to just bring people in. It's um, signing on to the statement that we need the, pe the We the People Amendment and that corporations should not be people and money should not be speech. And um, that brings people into our fold. And from there, um, that's how we get folks involved. So almost everybody who is involved with Move to Amend came to us through signing the petition. So one of the things that you can help do is make sure that everybody that you know is um, has signed the petition, and they can do that online. You can pass a paper petition. You can bring it with you to work or to church or to other meetings that you attend, um, to class. But um, you can also share it through email, Facebook, etc. And a lot of our local groups, our local affiliates, actually then you know table at community events or in front of the local grocery store or uh, farmer's market or things like that. And so there is a downloadable petition um, on the site on our um, page on our website and all the details that you need to move it forward and also what to do with the petitions once you collect them. I see that someone's asking if we offer internships in Minnesota. And yeah, we actually um, have interns all over the country. We have both an internship where folks can come to our office in Northern California and work out of here. And we also have um, internships that folks can do as telecommute. So whether you're in school or um, just doesn't work for, you know, you have another job or something like that, you can intern from anywhere in the United States. And if you go to move to amend.org slash internship, then you can find out the details of our internship program. If you have a particular skill set or area of expertise, um, say you're an attorney or uh, you have organizing experience, you have been an elected official, all, you're, you're, you've done fundraising before, all of that kind of stuff. Um, we have five national committees, and those are open. You need to apply because we have a limited number of positions, and we want to make sure that um, the folks who plug in are, are bringing experience to the table and also uh, prepared for the time commitment. But if you, that, any of these areas are areas where you've worked before, um, there is most people plug in at the local level in terms of getting involved with Move to Amend and starting a group or plugging in with one that already exists. But um, the way to get involved in the national work is through our national committees. So you're welcome to check those out as well. And then we also have 
um, at this point three, but there's always the potential for expanding into other areas. These three caucuses are where uh, we were getting a lot of interest, um, and so we've created basically folks who are working in certain sectors already. So we have an interface caucus with people who are working um, who are actively engaged with people of faith of any denomination or religion or faith. Um, so we have the Interface Caucus, uh, newly forming Arts and Culture Caucus for artists and cultural workers, and um, an Organized Labor Caucus. And I saw earlier that someone asked if Move to Amend works with unions. Um, and so our, our Labor Caucus is actually just getting underway in the last couple months. And we will be launching a campaign to reach out to unions and central labor councils, organized labor groups uh, this fall, kicking off with our webinar next month, um, which will be on September 8th. And uh, we do have a number of unions that have already endorsed Move to Amend, um, but uh, we're, we're trying to um, get more and do some concerted outreach there. So folks who are engaged with organized labor are helping um, helping those uh, local organizers to learn how to do that more effectively. What about members of the God is Dead movement? Well, uh, you can just plug in, somebody asks, you could just plug in with a local uh, organization and um, either a local affiliate or uh, get one started in your community if there isn't one already because you don't have to believe any particular thing around faith to work with Move to Amend. Um, and then I just want to, there's a lot of information on our website, so just a few resources uh, for getting started if you haven't connected with these already. Again, our motion to amend um, is the petition, which is the best thing to do if you want to bring in other folks, and it's just so easy to just share that. So if you haven't already shared that with everyone that you know, and you might be surprised to find that it doesn't really matter what the political persuasion is. There are a lot of folks across the spectrum who are interested in this issue. So um, sharing the motion to amend is kind of the easiest and first thing to do. There's a lot of information in our Take Action Toolkit um, for once you're getting started doing organizing. Um, there's sample presentations if you want to start to reach out to community groups. There are handouts. There's info for working with the media, there's information on lobbying and um, bird dogging candidates, so all the stuff that I mentioned that are the organizing work that our local groups do, there's resources on all of that in the toolkit. Once you form a, a, a group of folks, the best thing to do is to hold a meeting and um, invite your friends. Again, we can... Um, we can share an announcement about that meeting with the petition signers who are already plugged in to move to amend but not active, who live in your area, and invite them to, you can hold the meeting at your house, but you could also do it in the basement of your church or the library meeting room. Um, and again, you can either show the film as a way to give an introduction to folks or um, you know, just run a meeting and uh, we have materials that can help you do that. And then once you've got a group of folks who say, yeah, you know, we want to we wanna start an affiliate with you, then um, you can officially affiliate with us. And there's information on all of that on the affiliation page. There's, a, there's an application. Um, there's a couple articles that we ask you to read together that we wrote so you'll kind of have a good background and understanding of what we're about and what you're stepping into. Um, and then affiliates have monthly conference calls with us and a number of other resources. We give affiliates direct access to our database to begin organizing the petition signers um, and a page on our website and um, all that good stuff. So all the details are on that page. If you're not really sure where you want to plug in and you haven't already signed up to volunteer, then going to the move to amend.org slash volunteer page is a good bet. There are several kinds of um, skills that are 
mentioned there that you can check off if you have any of them or if you have an interest in, in working in those areas. And then one of our interns will give you a follow-up phone call. And if there's an affiliate near you, we will direct you to them so that you can plug in with their work. And if not, then we can talk with you more um, you know, in more detail about how to get started yourself. We can see if there's anyone else in your area who has said that they want to get started but hasn't yet and connect you with them so you can start off that way. And then we have um, an internal education program that helps for some of the skills building that I talked about in the beginning around anti-oppression, um, movement history, um, really move to amends analysis. So that's something that all of our affiliates participate in, but um, it's something that uh, you might be interested in checking out before even affiliating to just kind of get a sense of who we are and what we're about and our our kind of theory for how social change happens and the kinds of things we need to be thinking about. So that's at movetoamend.org slash education. And I see there's several questions um, already, and if you have any, please go ahead and chat them now, and then I'll I'll read them out and do my best to answer as many of them as I can. So uh, David in New Jersey asks if contributions are tax deductible. This goes back to one of the earlier slides. Uh, yes, contributions can be tax deductible. Move to Amend is um, a 501c4 advocacy organization, so contributions to Move to Amend are not tax deductible. However, we have a partner organization called Democracy Unlimited that runs the Move to Amend Education Fund. And if you would like to make a tax-deductible donation, um, you can do so to the Move to Amend Education Fund, and that focuses on our education work. Um, and uh, you can write it off your taxes, and we don't use that for direct lobbying uh, work, and so therefore it's tax-deductible. And there's details on, the if you go to movetoamend.org slash donate, uh, there's details about kind of both of those two things and how they work together and how which one you want to donate to, you can choose there. And I should say that if any of you haven't yet donated to Move to Amend, I would encourage you and ask you to please make a donation. Like I said, uh, most people donate not very much, and we just have a lot of donors, and that's who makes it possible for us to do this work. So we have over 10,000 donors, and um, we rely on them to keep the lights on and make this possible. So if you haven't yet, please become a donor to Move to Amend. How much growth, let's see, Isaac in Albany, New York, asks, how much growth do we need to achieve until we're strong enough to force the issue? Well, um, Isaac, that's a good question, and there's no, like, magical formula that I can say, you know, well, we need this many people, or we need this many endorsements, or, you know. But um, what we know is that we need to make sure that there are people who are in office who are who are championing this issue at all levels. We need to know, we need to make sure that this is basically a litmus test issue for voters, the way that some other issues are, that if you don't support the We the People Amendment, then people are willing to not vote um, for a candidate, uh, regardless of whether they're in a political party that they normally vote for. And that's the kind of pressure that we need to make. But it's not just about people who are elected to office, it's also about numbers. Um, it's our perspective that we need to be engaging in civil disobedience as well. If you look at the kinds of things that sort of create that tipping point um, with past movements, it is people willing to put themselves on the line. Um, and so we need to build enough investment that there are people who are willing to do that. Um, and we need to bring the solution of the We the People Amendment into so many of these other issues that are touched by this, but that's not necessarily what other organizations are advocating for yet. So, you know, folks who care about climate change, folks who care about um, election reform, folks who care about, like I said, private prisons earlier, um, not that they stop doing that work, but that it's clear, the connection is clear that, um, in the long term, and I don't mean long, like generations from now, I mean, you know, in the next 10 years, that we need the amendment so that all of our struggles will um, be bolstered and we will have the tool of using our legal system uh, for the public's best interest rather than that 
the legal system, by and large, mostly working for corporations. So those are the kinds of things we need, and we're also currently in the process as an organization of um, putting together a 10-year strategic plan for the, um, getting the amendment passed and basically being at the ratification moment. So those are the kinds of things that we, we do want to lay out to say these are the kinds of indicators. And there's no one clear way, but these are the kinds of things that we need going on. So this is what we have to engage in. Um, I already covered that question. Auba from Seattle asks, with many stretched so thin for extra time, how do you engage local ownership and organizing, which I may be wrongly assuming takes a significant amount of time? It's true that to be a leader, you're basically um, starting you know, a local organization in your community with, as doing an affiliate. Um, so it's important that that not all fall on one person. And also, a lot of the um, tasks are you know shared, and so that doesn't necessarily mean that, especially if you're really stretched for time, that uh, you're the best person to be an affiliate coordinator. But e even a lot of our affiliate coordinators, you know, are working folks, maybe involved with other organizations too. And the way that the balance happens is by having a crew of, you know, at least six, really ten to twelve, is better once you really get going. Um, of core folks who are all in the leadership. Since you're in Seattle, Washington, and saying that you might not have that much time, you are lucky in that you could plug in with our WAMEND campaign to get an initiative on the ballot and be a signature gatherer, and that doesn't require all of the kind of organizing um, and deep level of commitment, you can pitch in in a really important, significant way, but do it you know, maybe a couple hours a week. So those of you who are in Washington, I would encourage you to go to WAMEND, that's W-A-M-E-N-D dot O-R-G, uh, WAMEND.org, and you can find the details for how to carry petitions and um, even just pitch in a little bit of time to help make sure that we get this initiative on the ballot. WAMEN will be the first state where we have successfully got an initiative on the state ballot using volunteer signature gatherers and not folks from outside, you know, kind of dropping in, which is how Montana and Colorado both pass ballot initiatives. And so the level of capacity that we'll, we will come out with in Washington if we're able to do this successfully is huge. And uh, we need everybody in the state to, and then even in the neighboring states. So if you're in Idaho or Oregon, you can help WAMEND as well. So I encourage you to go straight to them to get plugged in. Let's see. I have a decades or Isaac in Albany says I have a decades experience in the arts, both in terms of content generation and content editing slash presenting. So yeah, I would encourage you to go to the link for the caucus page and get in touch with Jessica Munger, who's our program coordinator and the coordinator for the Arts and Culture Caucus, and I'm sure she would love to talk to you. Rich from Los Angeles says, I'm a professor. Is there a possibility of bringing a representative into my classroom? Yes, Rich, we have an affiliate in Los Angeles. And um, we also have one of our uh, intern team, or one of our senior interns is in Los Angeles as well. So I'm um, sure that we could get you somebody to come into your classroom. We would love that. That's something that we do frequently. So at the end of um, this webinar, there's a mechanism for you to give us um, some feedback, and if you could um, mention this again and say that you'd like a call, then we'll make sure that someone from our LA uh, affiliate follows up with you. Thomas from Andover, Massachusetts asks, can you describe the difference of what you perceive will happen following implementation of the amendment? What are objectors saying would be a bad implication following an amendment? Well, what, what the We the People Amendment would do, like say the day after it passes, is, is not necessarily anything in and of itself. And this is part of why it's so important that we do this in building, as building a movement rather than just relying on the amendment language itself. So what it says is that artificial entities like corporations or nonprofits or unions do not have constitutional rights and money is not speech. So it overturns those two Supreme Court created doctrines. And what that means from there is that at the local, state, or federal level, legislation can be passed either directly by 
the public through ballot initiatives or by legislators that does not need to walk around the fact that corporations have constitutional rights. So for example, some of the things that have been overturned as a result of corporate constitutional rights are uh, meaningful limits on campaign spending. So we could, we could pass publicly funded elections, either at the federal level through Congress or um, state by state or at the local level, and uh, corporations and the wealthy would not be able to sue and say that that violates their First Amendment rights. We also could um, differentiate between uh, among different kinds of businesses. So uh, in Florida, in the 20s, they passed a law trying to um, distinguish between chain businesses and local businesses and trying to bolster up and protect the local economy. And so they taxed uh, chains differently and... Um, some communities even wanted to say that they you know, wouldn't have certain kinds of chains because they were problematic. This is before Walmart, but it was sort of the precursor to that kind of a business. And that was overturned because that violated uh, big companies' 14th Amendment rights to equal protection. But So it basically makes economic democracy unconstitutional if, uh, if corporations have the 14th Amendment protections. And it says that communities and states can't say that one kind of business is better for their economy than, than another kind of business. So um, there would be room to make those kinds of distinctions. Um, there's also room for the Fourth Amendment protection uh, against search and seizure to um, n not uh, be utilized to basically keep um, workers or environmental protections from being as meaningful in terms of regulating the activities of corporations and keeping that kind of stuff private. Um, and so basic, but in and of itself, those things don't happen. It's a matter of what is the political w will after the amendment passes to decide what kind of role we want corporations and other artificial entities too, including nonprofits, um, and to some extent unions, because some unions have a, um, are incorporated as well. A role, what kind of role do we want them to have it both in politics and also other um, realms of society? And incidentally, all of those kinds of prohibitions or laws were legal and in fact states had them until this idea that they had constitutional rights that happened in the in the at the turn of the century from the 1800s to the 1900s so um it it would be it would basically open up the door for us to have more say over our economies and the way our politics would run and um what naysayers say is that corporations are people and it's just the people who are involved and that's why they need constitutional rights. But the problem with that is that corporations have limited liability. So they're not actually the same as people. They're the people who are involved are not responsible personally for the actions of the corporations, yet somehow with corporate personhood, um, their rights are infused. So they don't have the liability, but they do have the rights. And that's part of why it makes so much sense for corporate personhood not to exist because of limited liability. And there's a lot of additional information if you'd like to take a look on our website. If you go to movetoamend.org and look in the top um, menu bar under um, Learn More, and then there's Recommended Readings, and there's a series of articles that talk about some of the changes that could happen if this amendment passed and, and what the implications would be. So I'd encourage you to check that out. Um, Michael asks, what happens to Move to Amend and its efforts if the TPP passes, the Trans-Pacific Partnership passes, given that it will create an extrajudicial body that has supreme authority? Um, if the Trans-Pacific Partnership passes, we don't know exactly what it says, but probably, and all signs point to, um, it would be incredibly problematic and move to amend as opposed to the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Um, and in a lot of ways, there already are so many of these issues that don't get decided at the federal level because of the WTO or other trade agreements that already exist. Um, a lot of uh, the corporations already have recourse to basically go above the U.S. government and get laws overturned 
um, through international tribunals or through trade trade agreement um, provisions. So in a way, it's not like it will cease the need for move to amend to exist um, because all of that all of that perspective that property rights is what matters more than anything else, um, and therefore corporate rights matter more than human rights, came from you know U.S. law. But now it has been being taken internationally, and so we already have that problem that the TPP poses. But it would be larger, and so you know we do want to make sure the TPP doesn't pass. Um, but we're also not dropping our amendment campaign and working on the TPP instead because it all really comes back to, you know, our sovereignty as a country. And right now, our government, our our our, our constitution, by being interpreted to give the rights that are in it to corporations, our sovereignty as people has basically already been taken from us by the Supreme Court. And so, concerns of the sovereignty of the U.S. people being taken away through trade agreements. Like the TPP is sort of, you know, those things are tied up with each other. Um, Ken from Ohio asked, do I send a donation check to the California address? Yes. If you want to donate by uh, check, you can just send it to the address that is on our donate page, PO Box 610 in Eureka, and um, we'll send you a, a receipt and a thank you, and thank you so much. If you want to donate by credit card, you can just do it through the website at move to amendorg slash donate. Olga from Palm Springs, California, says, I'm new to this since Move to Amend has been around since 2010. Where are we in this movement? Hopefully some of what um, I talked about in the presentation kind of covers this. Right now I, we consider that we're in the education and capacity building phase of this movement. So our projects that we're working on right now, like Pledge to Amend, or um, the resolutions campaign to get local and state resolutions passed uh, kind of represent tactics that make sense for building education and capacity. And um, if you go to our Pledge to Amend page, you can kind of see who at the local, state, and federal level so far has um, pledged to support uh, the amendment. Um, if you go to the amendment page on our site, um, there's a drop down where you can see a map of all the communities that have passed resolutions and states that have passed resolutions. And um, also, we, our amendment, as I said earlier, has been introduced in Congress, and we currently have nine co sponsors in the House. Um, and there's also a page um, on the through the Pledge to Amend page that was shown earlier. I can go back to it here. You can also find, um, if you haven't already done it, you can find a link to contact your House members to encourage them to become co-sponsors if they're not already, and um, your, sen your federal senators to um, introduce the We the People Amendment, because it hasn't been introduced in the Senate yet. Um, <laughs> Trevina from Schenectady, New York, says, is there anything like a demonstration, for example, planned for the current presidential race? So for the presidential campaign in 2016, we'll be doing a lot of work, mostly around Pledge to Amend and bird-dogging candidates. Um, you know, but we won't just be focusing on presidential campaigns. So Move to Amend is nonpartisan. We're not endorsing any of the candidates. But our goal is to have all the candidates um, uh, for it to be clear what their position is on the We the People Amendment. So that's going to take being in front of them and really pushing this issue. Um, so that's that'll be the main work that we'll be doing in 2016, and we haven't got the materials together for that yet, but this Pledge to Amend page that's up on the on the screen right now is, is where all of that will, can be found. Um, Uva, I'm glad to hear that you are already a signature gatherer. That's great. And plugging in with Wamend, I would say, for folks in Washington, is the very best thing to do right now. Um, Stephen or Stefan from Newport, Flor Ritchie, Florida, asked if I have any comments about Wolfpack. Um, well, Wolfpack is an organization that we have been able to work with sometimes and not other times. The resolutions that Wolfpack is bringing forward at the state level um, when they're working on their own have not included corporate constitutional rights. They just talk about free and fair elections. So that's not a resolution that 
move to amend with support because it has to address both of our two points that corporations don't have constitutional rights and the money in politics is the second piece. Um, however, there are some examples of some states where we've been able to move Wolfpack to uh, be more broad. Mm, those resolutions haven't passed yet. And also Wolfpack um, is focusing only on a constitutional convention, which we don't have a problem with, but as I said earlier, um, we feel it's too early to uh, take a definitive position about Congress versus the convention. So we can certainly understand why uh, Wolfpack does, and you know we share the cynicism about Congress. But most Americans' understanding of how the Constitution gets amended is through Congress, because that's how amendments have happened before. So um, we believe in the principle of taking where people where they're at, and then if they need to be moved to a different place, to that being a process that you work with them on, rather than jumping out you know, ahead and, and losing people. So it's our position that we should you know, go through that channel, give Congress its shot, share and understand the cynicism that Congress will be the last to get on board, surely, and so the threat of a convention certainly does make sense. There are a lot of unresolved questions about what a convention, what the process for a convention would be, so that's actually also something that we need to be working on, and state legislators need to kind of figure out what a convention process would look like. Move to Amend is certainly not opposed to a constitutional convention. We just have some questions. So working with Wolfpack is complicated, but at the end of the day, the biggest issue is that right now their resolutions do not include corporate constitutional rights. And unless that changes, it's sort of a non-starter for us, because as far as we're concerned, that's the most important and critical issue. And um, certainly Citizens United and Money in Politics follows out of that, but Move to Amend is not a campaign finance group. Move to Amend is a pro-democracy group. And um, more important than just figuring out the money and politics piece is the underpinnings for what has made Citizens United possible, which is corporate constitutional rights. And we're sad that Wolfpack seems to kind of have abandoned uh, that language, and we'd like to see them put that back in, because initially they, they were talking about corporate personhood. Um, will the TP... Uh, Angel or Angel from Phoenix says, will the TPP supersede the We the People Amendment? Potentially. I mean, this is part of why it's so important that we build a people's movement, right? So um, it's less about the mechanics. I mean, certainly it will be incredibly problematic if uh, the United States um, and, and the president signs the TPP. But... Um, if we have the political will to pass the We the People Amendment, then I would say that we, if we can build that kind of capacity and that kind of movement that is able to amend the Constitution, then I think that we will also have the potential and the capacity to, even if the TPP has already been un, um, signed, to dismantle it. And, um, and certainly, you know, that would be necessary for NAFTA and the FTAA and the other um, trade agreements as well. It's not the TPP. There are some things about it that are new and worse, but there's a lot of it that is based on precedent that is already the the current way that the United States operates as, and agreements that the United States has made around giving away our sovereignty to, um, to trade tribunals that are international. Um, okay, just a couple more questions. We're, we're at 6.04. I have a little bit more time, though, so um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put it on to the next page here, though, so anybody who has to drop off, um, if you can, stick around and at least just leave your computer open when we close. There will be a survey that you can complete, and you can also let us know if you'd like a follow-up call with more information. Um, if you sign up on the volunteer page, that's also another way to do that, but I'd love to get your feedback on this webinar, too. Um, and you can also always contact us. So there's our contact information and um, details about our next webinar as well. Um, so if you have to go, thank you for being here, and I'll stick on and take uh, the rest of these questions, though, as well. And last call, if you have any question that you've been holding, now would be a good time to start typing it up. 
So Thomas from Andover, Massachusetts asks, are you familiar with the Anti-Corruption Act Represent Us is working on? If so, do you think that they are supplemental to your work, a different approach to the same result, or different problems being solved? Um, and then I see more here, but uh, yes, definitely familiar with the Anti-Corruption Act and Represent Us. Um, Move to Amend is not opposed to the Anti-Corruption Act. It's, prob it's, it's good legislation in the boundaries and confines of what's possible if corporations have constitutional rights and if money is speech. Um, but because, but that's a, that's a big but, because um, unfortunately uh, not a lot is really possible in terms of meaningful reform with those two assumptions in place. So Move to Amend certainly doesn't put any resources into the Anti-Corruption Act. Um, and uh, you know that's not something that our affiliates are involved in either, except for maybe as individuals. Um, but when local represent us folks are working, we would never encourage, you know, discourage um, alliances to be built there. But we just really feel as though it's time for an amendment, and if we're putting energy into um, lesser legislative solutions, that'll be taking away from the amendment, and it'll be. A lot of work to convince the public and also um, Congress and state legislators that uh, an amendment is necessary, but really overturning the Supreme Court is the only way to move forward. And so, and the other thing too is that the Anti Corruption Act focuses much more on money and politics and um, kind of the mechanics of elections and not exclusively, I mean, it also goes into lobbying and stuff, but um, getting at that idea that corporations have constitutional rights can only be addressed through an amendment. There's no kind of part way solution. And certainly folks in Congress are going to be very eager to take a halfway measure and run with that and say, hey, we've solved the problem and try and divert everyone's attention away. So we're very leery of that happening, and we certainly don't want to help um, facilitate that by kind of offering up a, a multiple ways to solve the problem when the real way to solve it is through an amendment. So that's that's our take on it. And, um, you know, but we tend not to blast the Anti-Corruption Act or anything like that. We're happy to be honest when people ask, like yourself, but it's not like you'd find a lot of materials on, on Move to Amend site, you know, um, undermining the the Anti-Corruption Act. It also doesn't really have any legs right now in Congress. And, um, you know, if we were st to start to get there, we would need to be careful and make sure that it doesn't become the co-optation measure to say the problem's been solved and everybody go home. Because that's what would Congress would be wanting to tell us if they were going to pass something like that. Um, Robert from Long Beach asks, haven't other amendments that affect corporate personhood and money of speech been proposed in Congress? Um, there are a number of amendments that have been proposed. Move to Amend, We the People Amendment is the only one that uh, addresses both points. Um, there, are, there are several that would just overturn Citizens United, um, and there are some that kind of take on other parts. The best thing to do is go to movetoamend.org slash other hyphen amendments. You can also find that page by going to the main page of Move to Amend and where it says Amendment, kind of hovering over that, and you'll see Amendment Comparison in the drop-down, and that tells you what the other amendment proposals are and what they do and don't do and who's behind them in terms of the sponsors, the lead sponsors, but also the organizations that uh, wrote those amendments or that are championing them. Um, let's see. Thanks, Stephen. I'm glad you appreciated my explanation on Wolfpack. Um, Angel, I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, or Angel from Phoenix, Arizona. Which unions have endorsed the We the People Amendment? I'm a Teamster and a union steward. Um, I encourage you to take a look at uh, movetoamend.org slash, slash organizations, and that's where you can see it's mostly locals. We haven't been in... Um, we haven't yet been endorsed by any, you know, internationals and uh, central labor councils. And um, we do have an affiliate in Phoenix. And if you're in a position to 
um, to introduce them or work with them to um, to meet your local and or if you're connected with the Central Labor Council of Phoenix area or the Maricopa County, um, I'm sure our folks would love to connect with you. And also, Angela, if you're interested in our um, labor caucus, um, we would love to have you. So um, we could also have a follow-up conversation. I can put the chair of the labor caucus in touch with you to kind of explore some of this. If you fill out the survey at the end and um, indicate that, then, then Mike um, or I or David, who are kind of the point people for this project, um, would be happy to follow up with you. It would be great. We don't, I don't think we have any – well, the local Teamsters in um, Denver are, are supporters, but, I, but um, I think that's the only one we have so far in the Teamsters front. And let's see. Um, Eduardo from Alabama says, where would be a great place to begin in amending the tax code for corporations? Um, well, that's not what Move to Amend is working on. We're working on a federal constitutional amendment. Um, potentially, though, uh, every state has what's called uh, corporation codes in their constitution or in their, um, in their supplemental legislation. And working at the state level might make sense. Um, this isn't in our presentation here, but it, it might be that in order to be successful in getting a federal amendment passed, we might need to amend some state constitutions with a similar language to the We the People Amendment, because at this point, almost every state actually explicitly has language saying that corporations are persons for the purposes of their amendments or I'm sorry, their constitutions, um, and, and kind of tax code follows from there. So um, that might be something to try, but, uh, you know, at this point our, our strategy is to focus on the amendment and then, um, like I was talking about earlier, by passing the amendment, that would allow us a lot more uh, latitude and flexibility in terms of setting tax code that um, – is appropriate for distinguishing between the biggest corporations and smaller ones. And right now, we have to treat them all the same. All right. Is there an international, Thomas asks, is there an international example of where this type of amendment exists and is successful? Um, not really because it is actually kind of a more unique U.S. or um, some of the other countries that were British colonies have as well kind of this idea of corporate personhood. Um, but for most countries, they don't have anything like corporate constitutional rights. Um, I mean, it's not in our constitution, right? It was created by the Supreme Court and judicial interpretation. Um, so uh, with some exceptions, uh, apparently... In South Africa, corporations do have constitutional rights, and, and also in the constitution that was written for Iraq by the United States, my understanding is that corporate constitutional rights are, are written into the constitution. But because it's a, a judicial idea, um, that, that it, it's not so much about uh, needing an amendment. The other thing, too, is that the the concept of corporate constitutional rights or corporate rights um, is happening more on the international, you know, WTO or through trade agreements um, uh, arena. And so corporations haven't really had to um, c completely corrupt the judicial systems or uh, legal framework of of country by country, they've been able to play a role in passing, in, in writing, and then passing these trade agreements that enshrine corporate rights, and then basically trump local or or um, state or federal law in each country. So that's also part of why we feel as though it's really important that the United States take responsibility and pass this amendment because this whole idea was really created here. And um, if we can put forward the idea that corporations, put, basically put them back in their box, not get rid of them, right, but put them back in their box 
of being an economic entity that serves a certain pa- purpose for amassing capital, which sometimes can be very useful, then um, that would go a long way to helping the rest of the world that is now dealing with this problem through uh, international companies and, uh, re- you know, either rewriting their laws or or basically just going at it through the international arena and and just superseding any local or state sovereignty that that may have existed before. So we will be trailblazers because there's not really an example of this internationally um, because it started here. And um, if you have, if that didn't quite get at your question, Thomas, I encourage you to ask it in another way again in the feedback, and we'd be happy to follow up more. So it looks like those are all the questions, and we're at 15 after, so I'm sure everybody wants to either go eat dinner or have the rest of your evening. So um, thank you for being here. I'm going to close this out, and your screen will automatically jump to the survey where you can give us feedback on uh, this presentation tonight and also let us know if there's any follow-up that we can do for you. And again, I would encourage you, if you haven't already signed up on the volunteer form, movetoamend.org slash volunteer is the best way to to let us know what your interests are, and then we will follow up with you and um, try our best to plug you in however that most makes sense. And again, if you're not a Move to Amend donor yet and um, haven't been able to contribute financially, I would ask you please to consider even just $5, $5, and even better, $5 a month to help keep this movement going strong. And um, let us know if there's anything else that we need from you on the survey. Have a wonderful night, everyone, and we'll talk to you again soon.